Okay, great. So the first agenda item is to review and vote on the minutes from last time. Um, Darcy, I believe you were the minute taker, correct? Right. Okay. Um, so Sarah, I think that puts you up next. Are you okay with that job tonight? Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Am I there? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me see if I can get the. Uh... Here's Jesse. Hey. Sorry. Hey, Jesse. So we're just looking at the minutes. They look good. <laughs> <laughs> I move to accept the min minutes of the past meeting. I, I had I had one comment about the minutes. There was quite a few acronyms in there: BRIC, CCA, NEMS. Back pace. I wasn't sure if it would be appropriate to spell those out, at least for some of those programs that are less familiar. I could do that. I don't know what PACE stands for, though. PACE is actually the only one I think that's out there. Property Assessed Clean Energy. Is that what? Yep. So other than capitalizing Assessed Clean Energy, each letter, or each word, that, that one was there, but... GOL. So a couple of things in there just for the uninitiated, like some of us um, weren't entirely clear. But I had no substantial comments other than that. Okay, would anyone like to second with those? I second. Changes? Okay, great. Okay. So roll call Dumont? Yes. Drucker? Yes. Breger? Yes. Rose? Yes. Durr? Is that a yes, Sarah? I couldn't, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes, sorry. Roof? That's okay. Roof? Yes, yes. Ravi Kumar? Yes. Selman? Yes. Okay, and it's approved. Great. So next up, public comment. We have some public here. Yeah. Um, we have one, sorry, I'm gonna um, allow someone from Sunrise in Franklin County to talk. Okay. Can you identify yourself, please? Oh, my name is Haven. Um, I use your pronouns and I'm 16. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about why it is so important to like put climate justice where it needs to be in your budget and really value it to the level that it needs to be cared about. Because I, as a young person, constantly terrified for my future because of the climate crisis, and not only my future, but for the lives, sorry, my family's selling, for the lives of so many people in my own community who are currently going to be affected by the climate crisis and are affected by the climate crisis. We have the Palmer biomass plant is likely going to be built, and that is severely going to impact Springfield and the surrounding areas. As you can see, like Springfield already has some of the worst air in the country, like it's huge, it's affecting everyone now. We really do not have any option but to put this as like an urgent issue. It is a crisis as a pandemic is a crisis. And policing <laughs> is another way that adds to this climate crisis. We are spending tons and tons of money on police's like gas money to patrol areas that do not, just do not require that patrolling. That's absolutely ridiculous. It is completely plainly a waste of money that is actively hurting our communities. It is hurting low income people and it is hurting black and brown people like actively. Therefore money needs to be taken away from the police so that it is not funding environmental destruction and it is actually caring for the black and brown people in our community. Ah, thank you. 
Great, thank you for that, uh, that you comment. I appreciate you joining and sharing with us. Um, I believe Bertie also has their hand raised, Stephanie. Um, yeah, it didn't look like a bit okay. Um, hi, Bertie. Hi, I'm Bertie Newman. Um, I'm a high school student in Amherst. And last public commenter, I missed your name, but I just want to second what you said. Um, the Amherst town employs almost 50 staff members for the Amherst Police Department, but we have one person focusing on sustainability almost or exactly no one um, explicitly on environmental justice. And if we move our money out of this racist institution and into climate justice, we could do so much good um, for the future of our town. Great, thank you, Bertie. Um, I really appreciate both of you joining. Um, and providing your input, particularly as young people in our community. So thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. We don't typically do a formal response when to public comment, but I, I want to thank both of you in, in that, exactly what Laura said. Young people, your voice and your needs are so important. So thank you. I would also say what I always say at my committees is that if you want to send your comments in and writing to the committee, then we would have we would have them for reference. Yeah, that's a that's a good point too. You could send those um, to me, and I'll make sure they uh, are included in the in the packet. Thank you. I'm going to make sure to do that. Great. Wonderful. Okay, I believe that's that's all the public that has joined. So we'll move on to staff updates. So um, a couple of things. Um, I did submit the BRIC grant application for a solar study. Um, so we're requesting funding to elaborate on what's been done. Uh, which was a baseline study by um, niche engineering which was part of the MVP funding. I do have that report. I haven't sent to you sent it to you yet because you had so much in your packet. So um, I will forward it to you all. Uh, but it's a very, um, very cursory baseline study uh, that has a couple of recommendations for some uh, solar development in town, parking lot uh, development, and a few building sites, uh, one being the middle school which kind of supports the um, proposal that was a resident request for solar. So I think the BRIC funding request was to kind of build off that and to maybe go a little further to maybe lead us to project development. So we'll see, um, I, I did submit it. So we'll, we'll find out hopefully within the next month or so. I, I don't know how long they take to review these applications but hoping we'll find out sooner than later. Um, those are my two um, kind of most pressing updates. Um, Stephanie, could we um, have a copy of the BRIC grant that would help us in um, the, the, myself and the um, students who put the resident capital request in for the solar study, you know, give us the context Sure, I'll try. I, it's not, um, it's a form application. So I actually kind of do it online and then submit it. So I don't actually have everything that was written up, but I can, um, I can probably get it. I'll figure it out. I'll see if I can get it. If not, you know, I can at least at the very least, I can give you the um, statement of interest, which kind of outlines pretty much what the proposal was. Yeah, Darcy. Uh, Stephanie, does yep. this talk about parking lots other than the school parking lots? Um, I apologize because off the top of my head, I can't remember. Um, one was the one was the middle school and then I don't off the top of my head, I don't remember what the second one was. There weren't many and I'm sorry, I just um, I didn't even read it like in depth so much because 
I sort of got it, skimmed it, and then was fairly focused on the application. So I haven't even had a chance to really do a deeper dive with it myself. Um, but yeah, I asked because uh, the North Common proposal is going to be in front of the Town Services Committee tomorrow, and that is a parking lot proposal. Yep. Um, and so I don't think anybody has ever brought up the possibility of canopies in that parking lot, um, which I'm probably going to bring up tomorrow. <laughs> but um, because it just, you know, started back in 2013, and it just has never come up as part of the proposal. So right. um, anyway, uh, no, I don't, yeah, I don't think that was one of them. But um... But they did, you know, they did look, you know, throughout the town at any kind of municipal property, and there there were reasons why some of them were excluded and some of them weren't um, identified as being uh, suitable locations. So, even um, I would say even that parking lot, it's they'd have to do regrading of that parking lot to do it there. Oh, the plan is to like level it, which I yeah. don't even how that is done but that yeah. would require resurfacing it then if they are doing that then yeah so i'll again i haven't um i, I haven't given it a deeper dive myself but you'll all be getting a copy so you can take a look do, do you know if the uh scope of work include is is it limited to sort of um the tech technically um the feasibility um of, of these sites, uh, does it get into at all how the projects would be financed or owned? Nope. Okay. It's right. only for uh, technical uh, development. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, that would be something of interest to uh, us, I think, and the CCA uh, in terms of how the, the projects might actually be financed and owned if, if it gets to that. Right, if it gets to that, I, you know, there, um, there was very limited funding for this brick grant application. Um, we intentionally kept it lower because we were advised that planning grants uh, were, were pretty limited. So I, I really actually kept it to be a fairly uh, minimal request. So, you know, the idea was just to sort of build off what was already done as a baseline and then bring at least a few things to sort of more technical specifications that can lead it to development. But it didn't identify, you know, cost or anything that, you know, that maybe could be included, but it wasn't specified in the scope. Good. Well, great that you got that in. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, so if that's it, Stephanie, from your end, you can go to ECAC member updates. Um, I have a few things to share. One is that we have a um, community member who has reached out to Stephanie and I about um, addressing emissions from leaf gasoline powered leaf blowers. So just flagging that as something that will come up at a future meeting. Um, they're gonna send us a little write up that they've done uh, about, I, I hope including, I believe including some examples of other towns that have done similar things. And then we can decide what, what, what to do with that information. Um, the other thing that's coming up is I was invited along with chairs of several other committees to attend the CRC meeting yesterday, which I think stands for Community Resources Committee and it's a committee of the council. Um, they're developing a comprehensive housing policy. Um, they're still in draft in draft form, uh, but they're going to send us a draft with some information about what feedback they want from us. I think from ECAC's perspective, um, they've already included in the draft. Um, some things on sustainability and resiliency. I think there's more that can be done there, um, particularly tying in some of the um, environmental justice and climate justice work that we've been doing a little bit more explicitly. Um, 
but I think what we'll need to figure out is, and maybe it's worth a conversation with them about timing, because what I'm sensing is going to happen is that policy is going to come out pretty close to when our report's going to come out. And I think we want to sort of be clear on which is the, um, or our plan, excuse me, kind of which is the, is the most up-to-date. First, we, we obviously want to make sure there's no contradictions in the language, which I think there won't be, but we just need to make sure. Um, and then maybe which one is the more comprehensive. Um, so just flagging this as something that we'll need to look into a little bit more at the early next year. Darcy, I don't know if you have anything to add to that based on your view, vantage point from the... Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I find it interesting that CRC asked for input from these organizations on the housing plan because at the same time that they proposed, they put in uh, a um, proposed housing plan. They also uh, had a first discussion of uh, revamped zoning and planning priorities at the last meeting, much faster than anyone expected that that would come forward. Um, and we just today got um, an update about that. And so that is coming up potentially for its second reading on Monday. And um, I mean, there's some possibility that it would pass on Monday uh, without our input. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I think we should probably, um, um, I guess, I think Andra sent in our, our, uh, our little, uh, you know, our request that, um, that we continue to be in discussion, that we don't have our plan in place yet, but that we're assuming that We'll be developing these things in parallel, blah, blah, blah. And um, how you sent that in, right, Andra? Yes, and, and I got um, you know, res response back from Mandy Joe, the chair of the CRC, um, thanking me for it. Um, and yeah, the, the zoning was not just you know, superficial changes. They're, they're really making recommendations that we should be a part of the discussion. Yeah. I can send you what they send, you know, the addendum, um, which it's very, it's very wide ranging changes that are being proposed, um, it, some for the next three months and then for between three months and six months. Um, and um, so uh, I don't know what we want to do about that. They, they affect probably our land use and zoning recommendations. I mean, we might want to send a letter just saying um, we would like to have input. We would like to have enough time so that we can digest these and have input um, because, and I think I sent the initial ones to the whole group. Um, uh, but I can send you the agenda that just came out, which, which is, it refers to the initial proposal and what the changes are after the first discussion at the, at the, uh, at the last town council meeting. Um, but they, like I said, they're very wide ranging proposal um, for the unlocking, unlocking um, development basically. Downtown and in the village centers and in the neighborhoods and you know refers to duplexes and triplexes and this and that you know accessory units and 
Darcy, did, did you say that they were providing the council with a proposal that the council might be voting on, or is it uh, they're providing recommendations for the council to consider in a more general way? Well, in order to, to, to change the zoning bylaw, the, the town council has to vote with a two thirds vote on an actual ordinance in front of it, a bylaw. So this would be, you know, the CRC has put in front of us a kind of like a, a whole slate of, of proposals that they would like us to vote on on mass so that it would then tell the planning department, yes, go ahead, you can rewrite the zoning bylaw because this looks like what we want you to do. Um, so um, it's it's a lot. And it, came, it came a lot sooner than what we were expecting. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm I'm there is a possibility it could be voted on on Monday. Even if the council votes on this, they're not creating bylaws that will be voted on right away, are they? I mean, we could still provide council with our perspectives on some of the issues that fall under our purview and council could fold them in with the recommendations they've gotten from CRC. I guess it can they do that, fold them in? Well, they will have, you know, if the council votes yes on the proposals in front of them on Monday, the planning department has the go ahead to put those forward, we would be, we would be able to put in our recommendations, but we'd be kind of behind the eight ball, you know, mm -hmm. like we would, we wouldn't be in the same position as if our recommendations came in before the vote. So I'm trying to understand though, um, this is just to allow This is just to allow development to occur. It is not specifying whether that development has to be net zero, whether it has to be connected to transportation in some way, whether it has to be low income. This is just about the zoning of where development can occur, correct? Uh, no, no, it, it is, you know, it's, it is with regard to whether or not we want uh, inclusionary zoning. It um, it has a lot to do with density, um, and uh, yeah, there there are a, there are transportation. There's a whole transportation piece of it, interconnectivity to transportation. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I I, I uh, there's a lot more narrative in what was sent out today than there was in the proposal last week. Um, so I will send that out right away to everyone. Um, I, I think it's, it, it's a, I know it's sort of a, a drag to be constantly having to, <laughs> having to respond to what's going on in the town council, but I guess that's, partly what we're about, right? We know when we're trying to get- Yeah, this. I'm just, I'm, I'm not comfortable with asking them to slow down unless I really understand that that's, that this is a problem for ECAC, I guess, is where I'm coming from. Yeah, Andra. Um, I, I was, I'm wondering if um, it would make sense to forward to them some of our initial um, ideas, you know, I mean, I gave examples in our letter, but I didn't know what our particular land use proposals would be. Um, so, or, or maybe, maybe we need to respond directly to what the narrative says I think we need to see that to know how to 
whether we need to respond. Okay, so Darcy, you'll forward that to us. Um, Stephanie, did you have a comment? No. Okay. Is is the um, I see the one that was sent to us, Darcy, on December five. Is the one is there a newer version of that? Yeah, it just came out the the addendum to it. Um, so um, yeah, I can I can send that right now. If we, to let's see um figure out how to do that well darcy i suggest you send that to us and i suggest everybody look at that um and i think i don't think it's realistic to think that we would come up with an ecac comment by monday um but i would encourage everybody that wants to make a comment on their own as a member of ECAC could, could do so. Does that sound like, and then maybe we can talk about it a little bit, see what happens Monday and have this as an agenda item for our next meeting. Um, Laura, I do have a comment and more of a offer to yeah. um, reach out to uh, the planning director, just to check in with her about how, um, you know, maybe comments could, you know, could certainly go to CRC, but, um, you know, might be helpful to get them to the planning staff too. And maybe I can just check in with her to see how that might best work. Maybe she has some guidance. You know, my understanding from her was that there were a lot of updates that had to happen. Like that was my understanding. And this sort of whole scale reworking the zoning bylaw was something that was sort of up and coming. And that the first thing they were doing was sort of making like what seems like a lot of changes were just to be a lot of updates because there was so much that hadn't that wasn't up to speed. But I could be wrong and maybe they changed course. I don't know, but I can check in with her about all of the above. Okay, great. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, I remember two more things I needed to say. One was that just letting everyone know, and for my sake, really, that the PACE, we had agreed last time that we were going to recommend that we join PACE. I have a note that I need to write that up, so I, I, st I still need to do that. Um, the other thing I wanted to note which leads into agenda item six on the annual report. Um, so Stephanie reached out to get on the agenda. And I think the feedback that she received was that from, was that we, um, lots of committees are doing annual reports and none of them are presenting them. Um, so I think, maybe once we get to that agenda item and we talk about the annual report, we can talk about whether we want to push to try to get to present at a meeting or whether we're happy just submitting the report. Um, so just something to flag for that conversation. Any other ECAC member updates? I I would just add that I, I sent out to all of you the the, the um, budget, the finance committee's budget uh, draft budget guidelines, which did have a lot of uh, climate related language in it, um, which was seem seem good. And I just sent you that addendum, everybody. So it should be in your email. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm not seeing um, any other ECAC member updates. So we'll move on to the electrification resolution from Felicia and uh, Chris. And they're not joining us, correct, Stephanie? No, okay. Um, so this is in our packet, it is, titled 
a resolution calling for swift just building decarbonization in the Commonwealth. Um, I don't know if Steve or Andra, you can speak to this at all <laughs> based on your participation. Um, yes, we. This is something that the um, Andra and I, along with the others and a representative from um, Rocky Mountain Institute, have been working on um, for a couple of weeks, several weeks. Um, started with a sort of a generic resolution that was modeled off of um, was it Arlington, one of the communities in Eastern Mass, and, and perhaps with input from RMI. But during multiple meetings, we worked it over to sort of um, make it appropriate for Amherst. Um, we had various discussions on what to include, what not to include. I guess the, the question that I have is I believe that the that group, particularly Felicia and um, Christopher were bringing it to ECAC for ECAC to adopt, endorse, and then bring to town council. But I'm, I'm not 100% on that, so maybe Andra can confirm or correct that aspect. I'm sorry, could you say what you wanted me to clarify? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what do they want? Uh, what, what is ECAC supposed to do oh. this? Well, the idea is that this would go to the um, town council to ask them to pass this resolution. And we assume that the town council would say, well, you should run it by the ECAC. So might as well do it first. Um, so we um, are being asked for our endorsement. So it'll be presented to town council as a citizen petition with ECAC endorsement? Well, they'll probably ask some town councilors to bring it. Okay. But it's a, it, it, they are asking ECAC to endorse it, not to adopt it and present it to town council as if it was ours. Um, oh. Yeah, my so going back, I don't think that that was the case. I think the idea was to um, to have the ECAC support the resolution. Okay. So you're voting to support it, not to necessarily present it. Yeah, that was that's what I think, and okay, um, it doesn't actually, it, you know, it, it's a it's really about state level decision making. It's not actually asking the town to take any action except to ask our, you know, state um, representatives and the, I think it also goes to the building, it's just some, some other, um, executive uh, and of you know parts of the government um, but it's it's focused on state policy with the, the the request being give us local control over uh, the degree of energy efficiency and um, other things that we can require. I'm guessing that people did not study it ahead of time and so <laughs> was, we may need some time. <laughs> waiting for questions to come. I, yeah, I, and then Dwayne and then Jesse. Oh, what? Go ahead. Other people, go ahead. I, I, I'll admit I'm just reading it for the first time now, but uh, it actually looks really interesting to me and 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 good. Um, I guess I I just one question I had on the uh, fourth to last re resolution. 
um, which was to uh, resolve that um, electrification and new construction codes do not increase rates or costs for low income residents. I'm wondering why that wouldn't be for all residents. Um, Somebody's uh, got to pay for it. Well, in well, I'm not sure. I mean, rates and costs are two different things. I, I don't see why it should, in it should, uh, it would be a shame for anybody, not just low income for anyone. It would be quite a disincentive if it increased your rates. Um, in terms of cost, I agree. Um, somebody's got to pay for it, and maybe low income should be exempt from from that. Uh, but in terms of rates, I, I I'm, I'm um, would imagine that uh, it would be quite a disincentive for anybody if rates, if, if you were in a different rate class because you had an electrified, if you went through electrification in your home. If that was the intent of the language, or the thought in the language. So without without knowing every detail about how rates might be impacted, um, there's probably stuff that we could look at, and I and I'm happy to look into that a little bit more. But without without knowing all those details, um, having had some experience with, you know, pretty radical changes to how uh, electric utilities work, I'm thinking about my time living in Boulder, Colorado, when we voted to municipalize the electric utility. Um, part of what we did and part of why I would argue there is no municipal utility that functions in Boulder 10 years later today um, was provide a ton of like off ramps in the language of the legislation. And most of that had to do with establishing rate parity at the time of launching the new utility. And that actually ended up opening the door to a lot of manipulation by the private utility to litigate against the city to increase costs in various ways that would eventually be passed on to rate payers uh, and also making us kind of more susceptible to uh, larger market conditions for renewables that might not be directly under, under our control, um, but we could potentially find ways to be flexible about if we don't have a strong commitment to not increasing rates for anyone. Um, I'm not sure that I'm right about this, but that's just one reason that occurs to me to not uh, commit in this language to no rate increases for anyone. I personally don't think that is the best, that, that is not how I think the costs should be paid for is through rates. I think that that should be decoupled as much as possible, but um, I don't know that that's going to be feasible. I don't know. Yeah. So Jesse, did you have a comment? Yeah, on the same one, um, I don't know if it makes sense to add language to qualify electrification provided that it does not increase um, carbon emissions or greenhouse gas emissions. Electrification is not, I, I don't know if it is always um, going to do that. And, and, the, and I don't know if this would also be more palatable to, uh, particularly to the BBRS, if if um, there was language in there that that limited this scope, and it says that it, you know, what it won't do if it says it won't increase rates or whatever it says it won't do, but it also won't um, compromise, you know, life safety or if there's a quick way to capture um, that it's not going to be in conflict. The towns are not allowed to like electrify at the risk of, of egress or something like that. I know it sounds obvious, but it, BBRS will, and the fire department are, are gonna, this will not be palatable if they think that sustainability is gonna override safety. About if um, people send um, Stephen, myself, and Stephanie any uh, specific feedback. I didn't catch what you were saying, Jesse, about egress. So, so if you could like write it down, so we could 
mull it over in, in, our, in the group. That would be really helpful. Um, and I think we got the, the point about needing to just say all rate payers should not be affected. That's not where the cost should come from. Well, I guess I'm, let me, I read that quickly. Um, I was reacting and maybe I was reading this incorrectly um, that it, it it should not impact like the rate class that you're in. So you move from, from you know, residential to, you know, a new rate class that might be for electrif electrification residential. And I that shouldn't be for any rate payer, low income or, or otherwise. But to the extent that um, electrification over a broad population and the um, potential need for uh, additional upgrades in, in uh, distribution lines, um, substantial upgrades in energy storage to accommodate everybody heating at the same time on the off the utility grid, that does need to be um, that cost does need to be um, borne by some party or group groups of parties, uh, and 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 to that extent, um, then I would I, I would agree. Let's not burden the low income on that. Um, and 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 there and I, there there are low income, and I don't know how you define that. If it's if it's um, people who are already on low income electric rates then let's then that's pretty pretty straightforward for the dpu i think in terms of just not letting those rates um go go up in any way based on on um electrification um but it, but um but i would agree that it needs to be borne by somebody if, if it if it's uh and i'm not sure if that's something we need to um grapple with here or have a dog in that fight with regard to as long as it's not a low income whether it should be <clears throat> all other rate payers or whether it should be borne by um, um, some other means of, of social um, uh, social uh, costs. Um, I'm not sure if we, if we need to think through all that at this moment. Um, just so you know, we have a meeting on Friday, just, um, just letting people know that if you are gonna get feedback to us, make sure you get it to us within the next day or so. If I could speak for a moment as a representative to the, uh, sort of more from the RMI committee, from the electrification committee, I would say that this document is intended to be a fairly broad um, view of what municipalities are asking the state to do, intend, and would not intending to get into a lot of particular details. And I might suggest that some of the questions that you raised are really great once the state gets into those particular details, but maybe you're picking this apart <laughs> too closely uh, for this kind of a document, this will be sent to the governor. The governor will look at it and say, yeah, right, okay, sure. Somebody <laughs> deal with this. Um, so I'm not sure that we need to um, pick it apart at that detail. And I guess I would ask the ECAC, is this something you would feel comfortable endorsing as is? Or do these comments that you've raised just now, do they make it so unpalatable that you would not endorse it? From, from my perspective, I think it might be helpful if there was like, um, a maybe, maybe just for us, like a small, written explanation of what you and Andre just said about like what the purpose of this is um, that would just be would otherwise I think this on its own without that background is it just it's a little bit confusing to me. All the whereases <laughs> a dozen or more whereases don't cover that. Yeah, maybe it's in there somewhere. <laughs> maybe I do two four. So just a, a couple think... sentences. You mean saying, you know, th this the goal of this is not to change 
policy at the local level, but to um, show many municipalities are interested in affecting state policy on um, electrification and energy efficiency. By yeah, I don't know if there's like a supporting board. statement you could add to just okay. state that. Darcy, did you have a comment? That's all I was going to say is that that is, it's not unlike the, you know, the campaign a couple of years ago to get municipalities to pass 100% renewable resolutions, same thing. They were trying to get the message out to the state. Yeah, and, and just the comments that I had made on, on the rates is not, I, I don't want that to de derail our endorsement at all. It's just more of a observation of some of the language, um, but um, um, I would be in favor of uh, of not 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 that standing in, in in the way. I guess my my you know my general thought on electrification generally is that it it, it is it's it's not you know it's not carbon neutral at this point. Um, uh, uh, we got a ways to go uh, before it's carbon neutral, but it is the pathway to get there. Um, eventually, uh, there's not really too many other options <laughs> on the table, but it it. Um, it, uh, you know, concurrent, and I think it gets into it in some of the whereas is, is um, that, um, you know, we need, we need the continued build, build out, aggressive build out of renewable electricity uh, to not only replace what we have currently, but replace even more as we add heating and elect and um, transportation to it. Um, and, um, um, you know, so I'm not sure if there's something in, I, I haven't read all the whereas is to, to get a sense of whether there should be a whereas of, um, you know, to, to really encourage um, renewable electricity um, uh, support and incentives and commitments to, uh, to make this all, this electrif electrification re really bear the fruit that we're looking for. I think the big picture here is to um, the different communities in Massachusetts working with RMI. I think the overall goal is to try to get the state legislature to allow local communities to regulate gas, natural gas, and um, fuel oil connections in order to encourage electrification. And the hope is that if enough communities make this request, then legislatures will see that kind of unified request across the state and maybe act on it. So while we are encouraged to make our own tweaks to it, we are also reminded that the more uniform these requests coming from different communities are, the more the, the clearer the message the legislatures will get. Okay. It really is about that. Can we have some local control to um, prohibit natural gas and or um, fuel oil connections in order to encourage electrification? Great. Well, or, so alternately, yeah. oh, go ahead, Andrew. No. Or, or, or alternately, uh, if you don't want uh, every municipality to have you know, slightly different regulations, then do it at the state level. Yeah. Wayne, did you have a last thing? No, I'm just going to concur with Steve that I, as I was reading through this, it does does seem very focused or centered on gas, uh, allowing municipalities to have more control over gas, um, what, what happens with, with, with gas hookups in their, in their communities, and, and I'm all in favor of that, so. Okay, great. So I think there was some, some agreement that maybe a little preamble or supporting statement might be helpful. Um, if anybody else wants to submit any more specific comments after looking at it in more detail, to do that before Friday when you all have a, your next meeting. And then um, it sounds like the next step would be for us to recommend it, right, Steph? Is that what you said, Stephanie? Um, okay, so we can put that on the agenda for the next time. Well, that you, yeah, you'd endorse it. Okay, so we'll plan on voting on that next time. Okay.
next up is the report, I believe. Yes. So there was a version in our packet, but Stephanie or Andre, did we send out an, another version? Well, Stephanie, I didn't get to the the put together version um, in time, but could we bring it up so that people could look at it? Um, yeah, so I have a really hard time because of how my setup is remotely. It's hard for me to um, access the document. So okay. do you have what I sent you? It's yeah, marked up, but people could look at it. You could incorporate the, um, accept the track changes. What, what is this we're looking at? Annual report. Oh. So there's one in our packet, um, but then there's a, there's a slightly updated version that includes some feedback from Stephanie and input from Ashwin, right? So right. exactly. Um, I can bring that up, Andra, unless you. Do you have it there? I do have it here. Um, so I, let me do that. Well, while you're, she's doing that, I, this is really impressive. The, I think the only comment I would make at this point is if, if it's not being presented, we should, I wonder about considering um, adding language about like, declaring a climate emergency at, at the beginning. I don't know if that's some something like that. It's just a potential. I don't think you need to respond. It's just a consideration. Basically, it was supplanting a human presentation with maybe a slightly bolder co cover statement. Otherwise, it's a really impressive piece of work. I have a question on the, it's like the first sentence, second sentence, the 12 additional hours preparing for and in task group meetings, that seems low. Wouldn't it be 12 times four since there were four different task groups? Or what was that meant to include there? Oh, uh, I, I was thinking of it as a- uh, 12 meetings. Per individual, <laughs> not per, you know, person hours. 12 hours, each individual spent 12 hours, not the committee spent 12 hours. I just, I, it was just a little confusing. So you're talking about full committee hours and then yeah. 12, I couldn't come up with. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it maybe it doesn't matter. I just felt like we did more work than 12, <laughs> 12 I know, hours. I know. <laughs> well, it's 12 additional meetings, not 12 hours. 12 additional meetings, that'd be right. Yeah, because of all the task groups. Yeah. So, you know, the, the co. Each group, there were four groups, and each group had three meetings. So it was 12 meetings additionally. Yeah. I, I was just adding up like, how many hours we each spent in the task groups, in the preliminary stuff, in the, you know, talking to each other, you know, our, our co, our co's out, outside of meeting. Um, that's what I came up with. I think Jesse's, Jesse's sentence could fit right after um, um, the, the sentence about despite dis the disruption of the pandemic, we, you know, it's not, you know, it's the next, that sentence is about how we still met with urgency and maybe a sentence could fit in there if Jesse could think of what to put there. I, I like that idea of make it, making it a little less bureaucratic and more about our bold, <clears throat> you know, Trying making it sound a little more bold. Yeah, yeah. The committee acted like it was an emergency because it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we can add that. I'll add that in.
I made a variety of comments on the document that I received in the packet, which is not this one. Um, and I'm happy to forward those to whoever is compiling comments, but a couple of questions that I thought were the most important further in where it gets into the part on um, capital budget requests. There were some sections in the, the again, the document in the packet where mm -hmm. on buildings ECAC recommends and then one, two, three, four recommendations. Um, and those struck me as not capital budget requests. Those struck me as previews of ideas that we are considering to include in the climate action plan in the CARP. So I wondered. Yeah, I have to say this, that part wasn't fully digested. You know, what really we should have is, you know, here are the things that really need to happen right now. And here's the things to seed for the, the following year's budget. Um, didn't you put in something about that, Andrew? Did I? Because I, 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 I asked you that question, and um, you said there was a sentence that you yeah, added. Yeah, no, it does say something like that somewhere, but um, but it, it would be good if it were named each time it says ECA recommends, whether this is a long term or. Well, I guess part of my concern is putting these ideas into this request almost formalizes them, and yet they are not ideas that we formally have adopted or even have fleshed out. So I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to even yeah. mention them. One, because somebody might look at these and say, oh my God, that sounds horrible if, if they don't have the full justification in front of them. And that might create opposition to an idea before people, before we're ready to fully present it. So I think some of these things should wait to be included in this in this in the climate action plan, not presented in little pieces here. Yeah, can you what we've done this specific? past year? So so Steve, is this an example right here? ECA recommends bylaws for building over. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's not a capital budget request. That's stuff that might be in the climate action plan. I hope it is, but we haven't decided on that. So I'm thinking it's probably not appropriate for a report of what we've done in the past year. Yeah, I guess one, I, I agree that this is not a capital request, but um, if there was some way that we could get some of this stuff in to show why we need staffing, because there's so much planning and preparation that's going to need to be done. Um, you know, a lot of this tracks the the CARP outline that is in the packet. Um, and you know, if you look at that, there's no way that you can that you can walk away saying we don't need additional staffing to do this this amount of stuff, you know. Um, so I, I haven't even agreed. I, I, I mean, I, I agree. These are ideas that you know we've talked about, or they've been presented, or they're in other climate action plans that look good to us but they're yeah we they're just ideas at this point it, so i think oh, go ahead ashwin oh yeah i was just gonna say that i mean this re this report i think we took a structure that exists for reports but i don't know how locked into that we are because i i agree that these are not really capital budget requests um really what we're doing in this document is talking about what we did and then making a bunch of recommendations right and I don't know if we just re labeled this as recommendations and ongoing work in these different categories, would that solve the problem of not, if we just don't call them capital requests because they aren't really capital requests? I think that would help. I also think we probably just need to be clear to, I think to Steve's point, you know, we haven't. I think we can be more um, 
conversational in this document to say, you know, we're working on a whole host of recommendations around buildings, some of which may include these examples, right? Because we haven't finalized the report yet. We don't know what's going to be in it completely. And I agree, Steve, I think if someone saw this, they would think that this is a done deal and this is what yeah. we're recommending. Right. Yeah. And I think to articulate too, that these aren't our ideas necessarily. These are ideas that are coming from consultants, from other residents of the town, uh -huh. other groups. This is not just what we think, this is what we're hearing. So one, one piece of language that I, imagine most people haven't seen that I added to the end. It's currently under the equity section at the end, but maybe that's not where it goes because I think it does maybe encapsulate some of this here. But in the equity section at the bottom, what I wrote uh, is that currently the town, or what did I write? Um, given that the majority of emissions in the town of Amherst are not generated by the municipality itself, but by a mix of residents, businesses, and educational institutions, the town needs to hire staff who can liaise with these constituencies directly. To implement the CARP, we need staff who can deliver information about sustainability and provide people with access to programs that improve their well being through activities ranging from accessing green spaces to growing food to sequestering carbon in soils and upgrading their homes and businesses for energy efficiency. It's, up, and it's I, not at the bottom, it's, it's actually near the top. Oh, okay. I, maybe I don't know where it is. <laughs> but anyway, I feel like um, that, that, that to me, yeah, I put that in there because yeah, I think let, that, let's that. Let's get it on the screen. Okay, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of frustrating that we had one thing in the packet and now we're trying to discuss a different thing that is scrolling up. Yeah, that's because Ashwin had pieces of it and- um, Well, then we should stick to discussing what's in the packet, not try to shift gears on the fly and discuss something different. I think there was an uh, attempt to avoid open meeting law problems. Yeah, this is this is a consequence of open of complying with open meeting law on a tight schedule. Um, there, yeah. There we go. Yeah. So anyway, what I'm thinking is that the a message there about staffing. I think if we can incorporate that into with some more specificity into the sections on buildings, on transportation, on land use, on electricity, and be a little specific about here are the types of things that we're likely to recommend. Uh, and that we're thinking about in each of these areas. And here's why we think it's important to hire folks to be able to bring this information to the constituencies that will actually implement and be affected by these recommendations. And I think if we just kind of hammer that point in home in each of these sections, we will um, uh, do ourselves a service. I agree with that totally. I think that's a really good idea. And yeah. If, if that's the only thing we got in the budget was just money for staffing, that would that would make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and Steve, I, I hear your point and I um, appreciate you going through the document that was in the packet and providing comments. So please do share those because we can we can incorporate those. Um, yeah, I think um, Steve could get it to me and I can add them to the document that I forwarded to Andra and I can just update it further and send it out to everybody. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. And and yes, I, I like where we're landing here with um, what Darcy and Ashwin have said. I think we pro provide some examples to support the notion that we need money for staff because many of these ideas are complex and will require quite a bit of time to flesh out um, and, and further develop. So it, it sounds like it's going to need to be reorganized or, or else just take a lot of the stuff out of budget requests and put it into a kind of rationale for why staffing is needed. Yeah, I mean, I think to, to Ashran's point about the, the format, I mean, there are these four things right here, or five things, excuse me, that are required from the charge. I don't think that means we, I guess I, I could see it being effective if we mention these really important things right up front. And then if, even if we get down to the part where we're saying funding needs, we just reiterate 
what we said up front and maybe put in a couple examples of why the staff thing is needed, um, I think that should be fine. I think we don't need to necessarily um, line item them quite quite as much. I mean, my question, can, can we scrap the capital budget request subheading? Because it, it, it really seems like that's, but we're, we're sort of tying ourselves into knots to frame stuff as capital budget requests. So why don't we just do away with that subheading since it's not yeah. a top level heading anyway? Yeah, I would support that. So then everything almost is overarching concerns. <laughs> Well, I would, would, I think it would more be, why don't we not call them overarching concerns? Let's just do away with those top level headings. Let's not, rather than separating out overarching concerns from capital budget requests, let's just go straight into the content, which is. So there's also operating budget requests and uh, ongoing funding for ECAC. You know, some of this is left over, uh, you know, just from Darcy's draft that that was pulled right out of what we getting for a line item for 60,000 for the committee um, for ongoing studies. So that there are some specifics. Yeah, there, there are, I mean, I think we want to continue supporting the resident capital request for the solar study. And that was in the capital budget. And the other thing was, um, I mean, we might just have like a little section for capital budget that just has what we had the last time, you know, supporting capital requests that, um, that are taking us away from fossil fuel infrastructure and use and the resident capital request and then have the rest of it just be about why we need it added staffing we need because we have all these different requests in the different sector areas that will require that that at least at this stage looks like we want we're going to be asking for these things in these areas and that's why we need staffing okay So it could be simplified and take out mm -hmm. all, a lot of this stuff in the, in the uh, under the capital budget that doesn't really shouldn't really be there. Yeah. Um, Laura, did you talk to 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 um, Lynn about? That it's is it on the agenda for the seventh of January? It is not on the agenda because we were told that that's not a typical thing that committees do for reports. It's just gets in the packet as a as a that we submitted it or I know yeah. that that was what was in the last packet for the town council there were there were um, they were agenda items but they were I think that they were just passed on the consent agenda you know we just approved them you know in a rote way by putting them on the consent agenda um, but they were on the agenda they just weren't brought up they weren't taught you know they weren't discussed i was told darcy that they could be submitted but there wasn't an expectation that there would be a formal presentation for it right and right that, and so exactly what you're saying they want they want us to submit it as part of the town council's packet but they don't want the committee to necessarily do a presentation because other committees do not do that 
Right, right. Um, so that's, that's, I think that's fine. I mean, I always prefer a presentation. <laughs> Our agendas are totally packed. We go to midnight every single meeting. So it's, it's very intense. Um, but I think probably having it in the packet is enough. All it takes is one counselor, by the way, to raise their hand and say, take it off the consent agenda. So that's just FYI, you know. I won't do that, but all it takes is one person to say, oh, I, I have a question about that. Take it off the consent agenda. Was there? Um, is that me? I'm just wanting to follow up with that yeah. point. Is that what would the expectation then be, Darcy, if that happens? Uh, it just would be that that the counselor, whoever objects and wants to take it off the consent agenda, would have to state why, and when, and then it would come up for a vote. Uh, I guess. Um, it would just come up, maybe it would, we don't have to vote on it, do we? No, they don't have to vote on it. They're just accepting it. Um, but it would just come up for a question and someone would have to answer it. And if none of us, none of you were there, then I would, have, I would probably have to answer whatever the question was. Um, but yeah, um, it probably would be good for Laura or you know, if Laura is available, if not Andra, to at least be available in case there was a question that came up about it. Okay, that, that seems doable. Um, there are consent agenda items at the beginning. Yeah, they're they're pretty they're usually, you know, within the first hour at least of the meeting that it comes up a whole long list of items that that the council is try trying very hard not to have on the agenda mm -hmm. okay okay there, oh. that are they assume will will you know just be automatically approved or that there's, there's no issue about so I'm not sure that I caught every comment, but I, I think I have the general idea and could redraft it based on that. And we could send it out again and people could just read through and say, yeah, you, you, this is, this is good. And, tell or tell Stephanie, you know, to just insert such and such here. And then I think we'd have a finished version. Yeah, Andre, that sounds that, that sounds good. So um, unless there's any more specific questions or six specific questions that you wanted us to talk about as a group right now. No, we, we, we covered what I wanted to ask about. Okay, great. Um, so I would suggest that um, Steve submit his comment any, to, to Stephanie and Andra and anybody else who has comments. I've taken a few notes, so I will also submit those to you both um, from this conversation. And then, yeah, Andra, if you want to update it um, and send it back out to the group. I think that um, folks should review it now and if, and provide plan on making right now be their their main amount of feedback. Yeah. Um, based, based on the um, most recent one, which I don't think everybody has, right? I can just I forwarded it to you and Laura, and I guess. Yeah. Um, from what I, I'm seeing, it, it looks like everything is is flows. 
So I'll, I'll submit this. Um, so why don't we do this? If you've already made comments on the one that's in the packet, please just submit those. Um, otherwise, I will um, send this version out that I've added my two comments on from this meeting to everybody um, to, to add any additional comments. Um, Andra is going to thank you for addressing those and cleaning it up. And then um, I think maybe it could go out for one more just email review for every, from everybody. Um, and if there's no additional feedback, it'll be ready to go. Does that sound good to folks? The only other issue that I had or question that I had was the timeline um, presented in this annual report for the climate action plan for the CARP. We are already, I think, about a month behind schedule. Yeah. Yeah. This is and wondering are we timeline. still confident in describing or, or stating a February time frame for providing at least a draft CARP to council? Yes. Is that still yes. the goal? That's the goal. Okay, that then we'll, I guess in our next agenda item, when we talk about strategies um, and agendas for next year, we, we need to talk about how we're going to get that far that fast. You've got the consultant working on the draft now. So there should be something coming to you. And I think my understanding was in January, there should be like an initial initial draft for you all early in january i don't know exactly when in january i mean lauren lauren you know submitted the timeline and i know they're working on it so um you know she's that's kind of that's her focus now is doing the writing and pulling everything together and doing the writing so that's all she's doing right now i mean she's got other tasks obviously but for our work, that's what she's focused on right now. So as far as you know, they are, they think that they're going to get it to us in enough time for us to have input and meet the deadline of February 19th. Those are the, they're trying to meet those goals. Those targets is what they're shooting for. Because I, I think we, we want to have had input. The first draft shouldn't be like just what they've done. It's what it, you have an outline that they worked on and that they revised based on the feedback that you gave them at the last two meetings, right? And you, I sent you all the update to that revised time, that revised outline, and that's what they're going from. So, but the, the outline didn't have the actions integrated into them it's still well so so let's close up the report conversation because we're sort yeah. of moving to the next conversation so it sounds like everybody's okay with the plan for the report um so moving into um next step so thinking about next year maybe reflecting a little bit on on what's working well what's you know um and, and what we want our focus to be i think um just to clarify what's written in the report um i think there's two different questions here you know is this still a reasonable timeline <laughs> which i think we have to what the timeline is listed here is that a first draft of the plan will be, we will, will, will be provided by February 19th. I read that as a first draft of the plan provided to us. ECAC will di discuss, amend, and confirm the draft by March 10th. So that's what's written in, in this plan. Um, and then we will present the draft CARP to the community by March 24th. So I think we can, um, what we're hearing from Stephanie is that Lene, even though it looks like we've we've been delayed a little bit, Linnean hasn't expressed any concern about meeting this deadline for February. So we should assume that they're on pathway to meet that. Correct, Stephanie? Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm nodding yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. 
And I'm saying that there may be an opportunity. Um, I mean, I know the first draft is for February, but you know, we could maybe check in with Linnean to see if they can sort of do a, what's been formulated. Maybe maybe they're willing to do sort of a an initial draft in January. You know, we can ask them if they'll give something then. I'm meeting with them, you know, I, we have weekly check-ins, so I'm checking in with them tomorrow. I can ask them about that. Daddy, yeah. Do we have clarity on that draft and what state it will be in? Is it strictly a content draft or will it be visually assembled? Content, I think at this point. Okay. Maybe in, in February there may be more, uh, there may be more of, um, you know, sort of the layout but um, I think right now it's going to be mostly content. So I can see if they'll do a rough draft, a very, so a very initial rough draft in January. And then you could expect maybe a more formalized draft um, in, in February 19th, as they outlined already. Yeah, Ashwin. Just a question, and it's not an urgent one, but I think it's sort of related to the discussion about how to reorient towards kind of outward facing work from our committee. But I feel like it might be useful for us to kind of plan to actually bring in public eye, the public eye on this report as we provide feedback on it. Um, I don't know what, exactly what that looks like, but I wonder what y'all think about that idea. Um, and if we If we were somehow prepared to have you know, more to actually call for more public comment about the plan in the meetings after February 19th um, and try to seek that out. I wonder if that would be of interest to us to do. Yeah, my understanding of the timeline is that we are planning to to get feedback on that draft. So I think that's a really good question. How would we how do we do that and in what form and, and how do we be more proactive about it? Yeah, and like to me, to me, one approach to that might be to explicitly have one of our meetings uh, around that time actually dedicated with some outreach efforts beforehand to be almost in to really try to get a lot of the public in here to talk to to respond to the plan um, or something like that, and to have a, like a really extended public comment with a with a much lighter, if any, agenda for the rest of the meeting. I think one of the ideas is to make sure that it goes out to all of the community leaders that were involved in the engagement to begin with. And even if they didn't necessarily participate in the meetings, you know, we do have a list of folks and we would just send it to all those people. There's also, um, I don't know at which stage this is gonna happen, but there's also um, in the scope of work, there needs to be, um, a translated version into Spanish for the final report. So I don't know at what point how that's going to get developed. I haven't really asked them about that. That have to be the draft for the community. The, what I'm saying is like I don't know if that draft is going to get translated mm -hmm. or if they're just translating the final version. So um, I'm not sure. I'll have to ask them about that tomorrow. Uh, the timeline that we put out a while back said that the first meeting in December was the meeting when the plan was going to be presented to the public, which I don't really know what that means, but I don't think it happened. <laughs> um, that, <laughs> that was what was on the is that the revised timeline or an older timeline? So that was the, time, the, the most recently produced timeline. Um, I, I remember that it said that as I was wondering what was going to happen that day and nothing happened. I'm, I'm looking at the report we got from Linnean on um, uh, November 2nd, it's Amherst CARP ECAC post task group PDF. And one of the last pages is the timeline 
that lists um, a, a bunch of steps. It's starting with November 20, December 20, and into January 2021 and further. Um, that's what I, that's the only timeline I have seen. That, so that was early November. It does not have a presentation in December that you just described, Darcy. But it does show that the presentation of draft CARP to ECAC is the 18th of February. Um, I, I may have been looking at this wrong, thinking about this or interpreting it incorrectly previously. I thought the various actions that are listed that are strategy evaluation and prioritization and research and de strategy development, I thought those were going to be involving us, ECAC. As I look at it now, maybe I was mistaken on the Linnaean side, and really the first time we see things will be that February 18th presentation. That's to us. Um, if that's true, then I'd be very hesitant to, uh, in our annual report, to tell the council that the CARP will be, the draft CARP will be available on the 18th. I don't think it should be available until after we've had a chance to look at it and discuss it and review it internally with Linnaean. Yeah, I think that that's a good point that we should make sure that's clear. I, I, that's not how I read it in the report. Yeah. Um, but I think we should be clear that the draft is coming to ECAC. Yeah, an annual report. Yeah. All right, I'll make that comment as well. Um, the, uh, the timeline that was um, the ECAC MVP timeline that was has been sent out a few times to the town council um, has different phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, and, and we're in phase three and it's phase three, number seven, number six says press on, on December 4th, presentation of prioritized strategy rankings to task groups and community partners. And then uh, the next, December, November and December, the FY22 budget request and final report production, February 19th, 2021, and so on. Who, who wrote that, Darcy? At the um, consultants. And then we, we, uh, we amended it a little bit to, to add um, that ECAC is involved in it. But yeah, that was, I can send that out again to people, but it's, it's um, called the MV, ECAC MVP timeline for development of the town of Amherst CARP. And that was that something that was provided in our packet at some point? Oh yeah, I'm more than once, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I can send it out again if you want me to. Yeah, yes, I guess. You said it had MVP in the title? Uh, title yeah. Title name at least? Uh, yeah. Could probably get it with just ECAC CAARP timeline, um, but we send it to people. So I think um, I'm not seeing it. I think we've got. I I don't think we should necessarily dissect the timelines in detail. I think we've got a goal here that they're going to provide a draft to ECAC. So we should clarify that on February 19th or 18th. Um, I think there was a good point raised by Ashwin about what, because it, it, what, this, what this is saying is that we're gonna review the draft and then we're gonna present the draft to the community. So I think we're, we wanna think about how we do that. You know, I think there, and there's probably multiple prongs of, of an approach here. Um, you know, sending it directly to the community leaders and the task group members, having having a meeting where we focus on this and inviting people to, to come and maybe asking them to 
you know, register in advance so we can have a more open discussion or some sort, um, you know, asking, and it may be that we pull out specific parts that we want more detailed feedback on instead of sending them a long report to review. Um, so all of that leads me to think that it would be helpful, Stephanie, in January um, to maybe just get an update on from Linnaean on how's it going and like, are there sections that they're real that they're thinking would would benefit from, you know, making sure we get community in input on? I mean, I think one thing that we've been clear about, but that we probably need to make sure we're communicating well is this idea that you know we need to invest in more staff capacity around sustainability. I think that's a message that we're going to need to figure out how to relay effectively to the community. Um, and I'm looking back at my notes from our last meeting with Linnean, and there was a couple things that they had noted that would be specifically useful for us to be focused on over the next month and a half that before we have the, dra the draft, the, the full draft. Um, communication being one of them. Um, how do we mobilize our community members? How do we, how do we get actual feedback on this. Um, and then the other things I wrote down were some some things around CCA, what assumptions, how fast and what level, um, how are we going to implement it, um, and like what key policies and how will they be implemented. So those were the things I had jotted down as um, kind of things that for the next couple meetings, while we're while they're focused on doing this, writing everything down and 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 pulling everything together, are things that ECAC needs to focus on. Yeah, and doing um, you know doing community engagement is also part of what was identified in their scope as part of the grant funding. So that's part of what they're getting paid to do as well. So. You know, it's not just specifically only on you all. There are resources being allocated to them to do some of that engagement. So, and that would be for like, you know, the translation services and that kind of thing. Um, and probably engaging the community leaders again. Um, you know, Gazi Kaya was paid for in the grant. I don't know how much of that funding has been utilized already just in that initial process. Um, and if they will be coming back in again, if they will be back in again to the process again, I'm not sure. but. These are things that we can touch base tomorrow about and I can report back to you all on. Um, I would, yes, Stephanie, you suggested that you could ask Linnean to get us some sort of earlier versions of the draft. Um, I think that's great. I, I would love to be more involved in fleshing out some of this broad ideas that they presented so far. Um, I think it's also important for us to go to some of the other town uh, departments with some of these ideas so they're not hearing about them for the first time in the community meeting. Yeah, they're not, Steve, they're going to be, they're actually, that's a separate meeting that um, Linnean um, and I are going to be scheduling with department heads. So basically kind of the process that we did with the community leaders basically will be doing essentially with the um, department heads. And that's right. the but, schedule that they haven't scheduled it yet. But, it, but if, if one of their ideas is asking for um, some kind of an energy disclosure with, with properties, that's something we need to talk about in January with folks in the assessor's office um, and, and um, some of the other, and likewise, some of the other proposals, we may want to have conversations with different departments in Jan, in January, so that the feedback they provide can actually be meaningfully incorporated into a draft. So I think the sooner we see these ideas further fleshed out, the better. Yeah, Andra. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it, we should have ECAC co-chairs at meetings with staff discussing the parts of the, um, you know, action plan that related to our sectors. 
part of the reason for that is that the consultants are going away after the plan's done, but we're not. And we're going to have this ongoing relationship with department staff. And I think that, you know, building trust is a part of it, but also getting, you know, just building the relationship that we can go to them and, and ask questions. Um, they can come to us and know we're reasonable and useful. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Reasonable and useful. <laughs> Can we put that on the website? <laughs> well, that does actually bring um, up another question, which is how much of um, and we've talked about this briefly, but I think as we start entering into this next year, I think the way we communicate on the website is going to be really important. Um, and so like what information can we highlight? It's not buried in packets, like, you know, any of the task group summaries or anything that, that we, um, that we want to do there. I know that's hard because there's not a lot of, um, really? flexibility. Yeah, um, like right now, as far as the website goes, that content is a lot of work. And, you know, I know everybody wants this great website, and so do I. But right now, the person doing that is me. And I'm going to be the only one that's going to be able to work on that, at least for now. So, I mean, what I was hoping is that we can get some funding to get an intern, graduate student, who would work on developing that, just like we did the initial sustainability site, which was wonderful when we first got it and when we first unveiled it, it was great, but it's outdated. Um, the town is updating everything now. So, um, you know, so I think as much as that would be a wonderful thing to do, I think like that's a little ways down the road, <laughs> you know, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. Can, like just if we could focus on, um, just getting the plan, you know, together. And I think you also talked about maybe doing some other actions while this process of plan development was happening, that there'd be an opportunity to work on some, you know, very specific things as well um, simultaneously. So while that's happening, there are things, initiatives that you were going to be developing. Um, and so what I understood at the last meeting too, that wasn't specifically like the website. Yeah, but Stephanie, or, or, I mean, is there any way that we can support you in trying to find an intern to do that? Yeah, sorry, hold on one second. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> let's do a little parenting. Um, you turn your camera, well, we can watch your dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, been, he's been requested to be out of the room. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think a funding request for, um, you know, for an intern, at least, you know, would be great. Um, I'd love to have, you know, one or semester, or, you know, at least one a year. And I don't know, um, like the, the um, NIMS network has fellows that um, are usually, they're usually only available in the summertime. So the application period happens in December. Um, then they're selected and then there's like a whole training program and then uh, they do the work in the summertime and that's how we secured Taylor. Uh, but the cost for the interns has actually gone up now. It's like now around $5,000. So, you know, um, I, I would love to be able to secure some funding to do that. Um, I, I think I agree with Stephanie's bigger point here is that something like website development, I think that's got to wait until after we get the first draft of the CARP released. 
Um, I think we need to focus our attention on one, getting that annual report done and out of the way, and then really clear the slate for January and February to really be us be working on those, those strategies, working through those strategies with members of the town, um, other organizations, and really just focusing on getting that, those strategies identified and written out. Once they're presented and we can kind of take a deep breath and assuming that they're received well, then we can start translating them onto a web page. But I think that web page development really ought to wait till after the climate action plan is developed. Yeah, Andra. Um, yeah, I, I agree. And I'd like for us to look at the CARP strategies version three, if, if we could, because I don't think we have version one or two. And I, I feel like a lot of this might have been pulled from other places. So so you ha you were sent versions one and two, and then version three was the result of your last meetings and the input that you all gave. The the card talking about the outline strategies, not not the outline. I mean, there's some good stuff on here. I just don't feel like we discussed them all or if everything that we have discussed is on here. Oh, yeah, and some of the things, well, some of the things were pulled from um, like the Concord plan. And this is my understanding from Linnea. Some of the things were, were pulled from documents that you referenced and that you said you liked some of the strategies. So we were pulled from there. Also, um, a lot of things came from the meetings um, and you weren't in all of them. So there might be things that seem unfamiliar to you, but oh, yeah, you. yeah. I, I'm just talking about the renewables one. Oh, oh that's, yeah. that's the only one I know. Yeah, and some of that I think was pulled because you had referenced other plans and said you wanted like things that came from plans that you thought they identified as like a good thing to do. You all asked them to do that. You said, what are things from other plans that you all think are good measures that we should pursue? So that's what they what they did. So if there are things that aren't familiar to you, that's probably why. I just feel like we, we need to go over the initial list, which is why I question why it says B3. Um, Yeah, I, I had sort of the same reaction. I, I did actually really like a lot of the suggestions, um, but uh, they seem a lot, a bunch of stuff seemed brand new. Uh, that was good, but uh, brand new. And, uh, um, and my other main comment is that um, as, as Steve had suggested, I think a couple meetings ago, um, and maybe it's just because they haven't gotten that far yet, but the, all the different uh, categories need, you know, action words in them. They, they actually need verbs like implement or um, develop or almost every, every category has like a, just a phrase following it. Um, that does not, it's not like, it doesn't, it doesn't describe an action. Right. I think I see a lot of great goals here. Um, wonderful goals, but I don't see plans and steps to reach those goals. Um, and I, I was hoping we would see more of those step by step details um, by this point. Um, I agree, it's a, it's a, it's a huge job and I, I don't wanna heap too much um, blame on Linnean. I'm just anxious for us to pick what we are gonna develop as something we can do in the first year or two and really begin to flesh those out and talk about the cost, talk about who's gonna be responsible for what 
specific steps and, and, and what obstacles we can foresee in a timeline um, and get down to that level of detail um, as soon as possible. So that's what, so you, so what you had asked before was that they identify the strategy for the 25% reduction by 2025. And those are the things that they're gonna flesh out in more detail, like in a really specific detail. Everything in the plan is not gonna be fleshed out in that kind of detail, but that piece is. And that's what you all asked for. You wanted something very specific and that was like the first piece to get you there. So, um, and I think that was communicated at the last meeting that they attended. Which are the ones that they are going to promote as the ones that will get us the 25 by 25? Sorry, so I don't have that in front of me. Um, it's a separate document. That's the, the Linnaean five top strategies that was in the packet, I think. Right. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the, the one. Strategies, the, the CARP strategies B3 document has 2025 actions, uh, milestones, milestones, and then immediate actions, and then preparing for long term action. And so yeah, I was a lot yeah. more than five things. So, well, Stephanie, is there, did they explain what that document's for? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't, so we hadn't had a meeting since they submitted that. So I, I apologize, but I won't know until tomorrow. Okay. So I don't think anybody knows what this document's meant to represent necessarily. So let's pause on that. Um, Stephanie, maybe you can ask them about, about that and reiterate these comments, which I agree we've already made to them, but not helpful to reiterate the action, I you know, action words and things like that. Um, and we can, um, talk to them more next time or, and then we'll get more information in, in January as you're asking you the document that says Linnaean top, by top strategies. So these were the things that Jim verbally talked about at our last meeting. A few of you had asked for him to write them down. So I relayed that message. He wrote them down and that's what these are. This, this is good. I'm glad that we have them in writing. Um, what we might want to do, probably not tonight, but next time will be for us to decide if we like these top five strategies, discuss if there's add some, subtract some, but then more importantly, maybe we, we start dividing up responsibilities on fleshing these out further um, with each of us taking on some tasks, working with Linnaean, but also working with other um, folks in town to explore these, how they've worked in other communities and how they could work in detail and, and create that step-by-step -step plan, um, begin to begin to create that step-by-step -step plan. Yeah, and I think um, sort of bringing it full circle, you know, I think if these are the kind of the top five things we're gonna focus on for getting to our 2025 goal, um, these will be the top five things that we're gonna wanna get community, specific community input on. Um, so I think thinking about how this is, how I think there's a couple like layers, like the step-by-step -step process of how it's gonna work, who needs to make the decisions, who's in charge, how much, it, you know, what cost, if any, is associated with it, what community, what departments we need to engage specifically on these topics, um, you know, and what GHG reductions or would we anticipate from them are a couple of thoughts that I think we could dig into. So I think that's a great idea, Steve, as a focus. Um, so I, we've got four minutes left and I don't want to run over. Um, so I, I think We've, we've started this conversation, more, more to be had, um, but I think for our next meeting, um, we'll get a, an update from Stephanie based on her conversations with Linnaean. Um, 
and maybe hear a little bit more about what we can expect from them in, in January. Um, and then we can start to dig into these, these actions a bit more with, with all of those framings in mind. Um, there was something else I had written down as well. Um, I think, and then we're also going to talk next time about the, um, the electrification endorsement and zoning, if, if we have any comments there. So I'll, I'll write all that up and, and send it in an, in an email to folks. Um, I'm also, I'll also make sure we circulate this document, the report document for folks to add comments to. Um, I don't think, my vote is that I don't think we should have a meeting in two weeks. I'm not gonna be able to attend and I don't think Stephanie's gonna be able to attend. Um, I think we should provide feedback on the report um, and get that submitted. And if Andre, you need any help with that, that we can do, I think we should provide that. Um, I think I need to take a break from work. <laughs> Um, and I think others probably do as well. So that would be my proposal, unless anyone feels really strongly we need to meet on December 30th. What would be our meeting after December 30th? January uh, 13th. Would there be any reason to shift that meeting a week earlier and have our next meeting on January 6th and then do biweekly from that? I just have to change the <laughs> change everything calendar, but you'd all have to cancel it on your own, what I've already set up, but okay, possible. Or, or perhaps a meeting January 6th and 13th, then stay on the bi-weekly from the 13th forward. I just yeah. have to make sure that I advertise and I, I have the agenda by January 4th, which is the Monday. I absolutely have to advertise it on that day before 4.30. So I just, I don't wanna have to, cause I don't, I'm not looking at my calendar, but um, I'm not, I'm on vacation. So I'm not gonna be working right. prior. So I don't wanna have to worry about posting agendas and getting things on the town calendar that week. So, yeah, that's perfectly reasonable. And I, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm just anxious to get working on this and making progress and having the next meeting be a month from now, middle of January, it just, we're pushing closer and closer to those deadlines. Well, yeah, especially right. if we're gonna be giving, you know, some more detailed feedback about the main strategies. I, I'm worried that we'll be working at cross purposes uh, if we, Wait. Well, I think we I think we need to focus on what Linnean asked us to focus on, which is like the implementation of those strategy strategies. How are they going to actually be implemented in Amherst? Um, but we should confirm because I agree we don't want to be doing stuff that they're also doing. Uh, I I would you know if if the issue is just getting a meeting posted, uh, you know I could help with that. Um, us just getting an agenda to the. To, you know yeah that's kind of my job though darcy i don't i'm not I'm, no offense yeah so this is what we're going to do guys we're going to set up a one hour meeting on the sixth um or we can set it up for a normal amount of time but i think we should keep it short i don't think we should cancel next week's meetings just to have more meetings later but i agree with steve that i think we should maybe spend that meeting just really focusing on what we're going to do for this next coming this coming maybe we focus the agenda item just specifically on taking these five getting an update from stephanie on um, and then taking these five items and, and doing what we need to do to move them forward um does that sound okay to folks I, yeah and i can send you the update on friday like i can type up an update yeah that'd, that'd be great that would everyone be helpful. so that you're not waiting till the next weekend for the our next meeting for the update you'll get it ahead of time That'd um, be great. so i could do it that way my one suggestion would be that our january 6th meeting we affirm which top five or six or maybe four 
but we uh, definitely affirm which of those are going to be our top strategies that we then pursue in more detail. That's a good a good point. I got to go to another meeting, you guys. Have a great holiday. Rest. Enjoy the snow. Be safe. Do all the things that make you feel cozy and good. I'll see you all on the 6th. <laughs> I got to go, too. Bye, everyone. OK. Very good. Thank you. Um, all right. I think that's all. Everybody enjoy the snow and <laughs> time with your immediate family and pod since and that's all. Those. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll be following up over email. All right. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, all.